press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Hello everyone. So uh, today uh, start with the last concept uh, uh, in case of uh, this uh, surface chemistry that is uh, about uh, emulsion. Emulsions. Okay. So if you take uh, these emulsions as it is a I can say is a corona here. So emulsions is not there for your theory part but it will come in the uh, competitives. Okay, so you should know about the emulsion which is, a, which is a very small concept. So if you take emulsions, so I already discussed in case of uh, what uh, different types of uh, collides uh, that uh, we have discussed depending upon the disperse uh, phase and dispersion medium, right. So there were uh, the earlier classification what we have done. So there I told that uh, these emulsions are nothing but uh, the colloidal solutions where both the dispersion phase as well as the dispersion medium is in the solution state. Okay, so what we can say the definition for this one, the type of colloidal system, the type of colloidal system, type of colloidal system <coughs> in which, in which both both okay dispersion medium dispersion medium and and dispersed phase dispersed phase are in are in liquid state are in liquid state such a type of colloidal systems are called as what? The emulsions. Such a type of uh, colloidal systems are called as the emulsions. So here uh, you can prepare these emulsions by mixing any two immiscible liquids or you can say partially miscible liquids. So here uh, you know that immiscible means they are not mixing with each other. Is that clear? They are not forming a homogeneous mixture. If you mix them, they form the two different layers. Such type of liquids you have to use for the preparation of uh, these emulsions. So what they are saying, emulsions, they can be prepared, okay. So they can be prepared by mixing, can be prepared by mixing, yes, Arthakriyala by mixing to immiscible immiscible okay or you can say partially miscible partially miscible liquids so this is how you can prepare the what emulsions so it uh, these emulsions we are going to see in our uh, day to day life also if i give the examples now then you can understood what are emulsions so understood the definitions so they are the colloidal systems where the dispersion phase as well as the dispersion medium both are in the what liquid state both of them are in the liquid state and then they can be prepared by just mixing the two immiscible liquids or you can say the two partially miscible liquids okay so uh, here uh, you can give that uh, uh, example you can have say for example if you mix oil with the water okay oil with water so you know that uh, water is a polar solvent whereas if you take the oil it is non polar in nature right so that's why if you mix oil with the water it will form into a different you can easily distinguish between the oil and the water but if you take uh, say for example uh, uh, if you have nacl and if you add to water you cannot easily distinguish small amount of nacl if you take and if you add to the water you cannot easily distinguish between uh, what we can say uh, the salt and the water but here in case of this uh, emulsion you can easily distinguish between the two liquids which are mixed during their preparation right so that like that we are uh, uh, that is the nothing but the emulsions okay so here these emulsions are of two types if you take the 
types of emulsions they are of two types the first type is water in oil okay if you take a small amount of water and if you add that one to the large amount of water so how we can say that one water in oil or uh, water in oil okay first type is water in oil okay so how you can represent this one so water that is w in oil like that you can right so there is a interface between these two that we can represent here okay so here which is a dispersion medium and which is a dispersed phase so in means that is nothing but the medium and uh, what you are going to add that will become the dispersive phase okay so here what we can say so water is dispersed water is dispersed in oil in oil so what we can say so water is a dispersed phase and what about the oil oil act as a dispersion medium so if you get the mcqs you can easily write this one okay because it is water in oil water you have added small amount of water uh, if you have added to what the oil okay so if i represent that one say for example you are having uh, some container means if you are adding uh, you are having some container so in that container what you have taken you have taken the oil that i am going to represent with the help of a white color say for example and then if you are adding the water to it one that i am representing with the help of a blue circles can you see it this one can you differentiate now now here so what water is added to the oil i can say that these are nothing but the water this is nothing but the water and what we can see here is nothing but the oil so that's why the one which is present in larger quantity is nothing but our dispersion medium and the one which is present in the smaller quantity is nothing but the water so as these two are immiscible with each other so they will be uh, mixed improperly here such type of solutions colloidal solutions are called as what emulsion okay so this is one type for this we can give the example of butter for this you can give the example of butter butter is an example for what uh, water in oil type likewise uh, you can have one more example uh, that is nothing but your uh, what cream okay so milk cream what you are going to get no that is also an example for what so that is also an example for your water in oil type of emulsions okay understood the first one so the if the water is dispersed in case of oil such a type of emulsion is called as water in oil dispersion or you can say emulsion and uh, here here i have given the diagrammatic representation for that one and then if you take the example for such a type of uh, water you can say the emulsions so example is nothing but the butter and the cream okay na so again you are having the second type so second type is nothing but oil in water second type is oil in water okay so how you can represent this one oil in water type i can write here oil in water type this is water in oil type like that so you can easily say now so oil in water type means so which is acting as a dispersion medium or first if i write so oil is dispersed oil is dispersed in water oil is dispersed in water okay so here so what, what about the oil oil act as a dispersive phase and water acts as a what dispersion medium in such uh, this type of uh, what we can say yes uh, i think you are getting it is a very simple and easy concept so what is that so here in case of oil in water type oil act as a dispersion phase dispersion phase and if you take the water it acts as a dispersion medium right so then just if i represent this one how you can represent say if again there is some container into that container oil in water right so oil in water okay so uh, the water should be in the larger amount that i am representing with the help of a blue color 
okay so here it is nothing but the oil in that oil you can see that uh, so that is water you can see that there is a presence of there are the presence of this water okay water droplets you can see here so what we can say the colorless are nothing but what oil sorry and uh, here the blue color what that is is nothing but the what you can say water okay so water i have represented with the help of uh, blue circles and uh, uh, oil i have represented with the help of uh, what the uh, white color circles okay so which is the dispersive phase here phase is oil medium is water which is present in larger amount water will be there in the larger amount and then oil will be in the smaller quantities that we can say in the form of droplets here okay so for this uh, we can give the example of uh, milk we can have the example of milk as well as some vanishing creams also some vanishing creams also you can give the example so if you see the milk no sometimes you are going to see uh, if you boil that milk if it is a thick milk and you are not added the water large quantity of water to it, that one means if you boil it properly means you are going to see that uh, there will be yellow yellow color or droplets like you can you say that one as cream or you can say that one as butter like that so that you can easily see so that is nothing but what oil in water type oil in water type is an example for what milk milk in case of milk fat and water we can see fat acts as a oil and water acts as a dispersion medium there so some uh, in uh, in some here the question has been asked what is that uh, what we can say uh, which is a dispersed phase and dispersion medium in case of milk in case of milk oil is the dispersed phase and water is the dispersion medium that's how you have to write okay so this is all about the uh, definition of the emulsion and the types of emulsion which are of two types one is a water in oil type and one more is nothing but the oil in water type so if you take uh, these two out of these two the second one that is nothing but uh, oil in water type okay oil in water type is uh, what little bit unstable they are unstable so then in order to make them stabilize we are going to add some reagents those reagents are called as the emulsifiers what they are called as emulsifiers so what i am telling now so uh, that is the second type what is that oil in water type oil in water type <coughs> of emulsions of emulsions are unstable are unstable okay so they can be stabilized they can be stabilized by adding suitable reagents called as the what we call those reagents as emulsifiers what we called as emulsifiers so what are these emulsifiers so we can define them as the substances that that are added the substances what are emulsifiers the substances that are added that are added to stabilize to stabilize the emulsions to stabilize the emulsions are called what emulsifiers or you can say emulsifying reagents okay so that process is called as emulsification so uh, that is this process is called as what emulsification i think you are familiar with that term so you are uh, going to get this phenomenon that is nothing but uh, emulsification in case of your biology right emulsification of fat by bile juice uh, or you can say that uh, bile salts or bile pigments so there you are going to see the emulsification of fats because you know that fats are insoluble in water but uh, says so that's why the digestion is little bit difficult the digestion is little bit difficult that needs emulsification before their digestion before they will be assimilated by seeing by converting into simpler molecules they should be first emulsified so for that process is called as emulsification here so what is the how we can uh, define this uh, emulsification the process of the process of 
the process of stabilizing the process of stabilizing the emulsions the process of stabilizing the emulsions by adding by adding by adding suitable by adding suitable emulsifiers by adding suitable emulsifiers is called as what we call that one as emulsification it's called as emulsification okay so now there are different reagents which are used to emulsify the uh, uh, that is water in oil type of emulsion or else oil in water type of emulsion so let us list out what are the reagents that we are going to add to emulsify what is the meaning of that we will stabilize to stabilize to be like oil in water or water in oil type uh, interface should be there then only we are going to get the what emulsions so why should we should do stabilize because they are we are having very wide uses in our daily life one of the best is nothing but the adsorption of medicines that takes place mainly by the emulsifications as well as we learn about the cleansing action of soap also right there also there is a formation of micelles so that is also an example for your uh, what emulsification okay so let us discuss now so what i said uh, so emulsifiers are nothing but the substances that are added to stabilize the emulsions and here the uh, the process of stabilizing the emulsions by adding the emulsifiers is called as what emulsification so let us see what are the reagents that we can use or what are the emulsifying reagents for water in oil type as well as what we can say uh, second type that is nothing but oil in water type right you i think you know down all these uh, things so here let us see the first one so that is nothing but oil in water okay for this one oil in water type what are the examples i have given milk and vanishing cream i have given the examples so what are the emulsifying reagents that we can add to be to uh, be the oil and water in a phase in interface to form the emulsion so the reagents are you can add the proteins what we can add proteins we can use uh, as the emulsifiers or we can use the gums okay so gums we can use as the emulsifiers or you can use natural and synthetic soaps natural and synthetic soaps so all these are nothing but the uh, emulsifier synthetic soaps uh, emulsifiers that are used to stabilize the oil in water type of what emulsions oil in water type of emulsions can be uh, stabilized by adding all these what emulsifying reagents okay so likewise for what water in oil type what are all the emulsifying reagents so you can add heavy metal salts of fatty acids heavy metal salts salts of fatty acids fatty acids okay again you can add the long chain alcohols so long chain alcohols okay so as well as lamp black lamp black can also be used as a emulsifying reagent for water in oil type of emulsion for water in oil type of emulsion so you just uh, uh, observe these two things so that is nothing but uh, oil in water type can be stabilized or emulsified by using these reagents similarly water in oil type can be stabilized either by using heavy metal salts of fatty acids or long chain alcohols you can use and also you can use the lamp black okay so again so if you come to uh, the one more important uh, concept that is called as deemulsification okay so the name itself indicate deemulsification means what the breaking of emulsions into constituent reagents so that is the reverse of emulsification okay so you know that emulsification is stabilizing 
the uh, emulsions by adding the suitable reagents there should be they should they should be in a interface but here what you are doing in case of what demulsification emulsification okay so you are separating the two constituents of an emulsion so two constituents of an emulsion by suitable methods okay let us see so that is the process of what is demulsification it is the process of separation of process of separation of or you can say breaking of also you can write that one the process of separation of constituent particles constituents of constituents of emulsion constituent of constituents of emulsions into two into two because uh, two constituents we can have one will be the dispersed phase and one more will be the dispersion medium if we separate those two by suitable methods like uh, you can uh, employ the methods for this uh, demulsifications as uh, you can have freezing if you freeze them they will separate into two constituents or else you can use the uh, what is that uh, centrifugation centrifugation okay centrifugation method and uh, also you can uh, use the boiling method also if you boil also you can separate the oil from the water right so chata chata anta agutalva oil sarpa enadru neeralli bidide anta helidre or else oil al sarpa neeride anta helidre so you can see that one right so agarane ella hakbekadre iga adralli now enadru mustard seeds anta vela hakdaga adal moisture content iruttalva so they will separate so like that or else if you go for uh, centrifugation this you are going to do in case of uh, clinical laboratories like uh, blood is also an example for colloid right so if you take that blood and if you centrifuge that one that will separate into serum and the plasma proteins plasma and the serum so that plasma consists of the proteins i think so okay so nowadays you uh, you know about the uh, rt pcr test they are going to bring some uh, what uh, test tube like uh, which is having a red color liquid so what is that that is nothing but the serum right that is separated from the blood right so that consists of antibodies if you add the reagent or your sample to that one that antigen if they consist they will react and they will coagulate right that is a different concept why i am taking that uh, example here means how you got that serum so when the blood is used or uh, water uh, say subjected to centrifugation so what is that centrifugation that you are going to learn in higher classes very simple concept if you take that one uh, uh, what pipette like structure it has been covered if you centrifuge that one so it will revolute it will revel, revolve uh, at a very high speed during that speed what happens uh, the heavy particles will settle down and uh, the lighter particles will come up right so that's why the plasma protein will settle down and that one so like that you can uh, uh, what separate the constituents into two by the centrifugation or if you simply freeze it one you can see that Uh, oil will be get separated right so like uh, wise you can uh, demulsify uh, the uh, what you can say the emulsions so what is the meaning of that you can separate the constituent particles of the emulsions into two okay so that can be done by any of this process so stabilize emulsification is stabilizing demulsification is destabilizing but yaar you are making unstable is it clear if they are constituent particles are together then is stable if they are separated from one another that is unstable that can be done by demulsification is that clear so different emulsify reagents are used for the two types of what the emulsions so where we come across uh, these emulsions so i already said so in the uh, what you can say the drugs what we are going to use so they are also what the uh, emulsions like uh, say for example you can have your antiseptic lotions if you go for the applications if you go for the applications of these emulsions you can see the applications 
the first one uh, the creams like you can say the antiseptics and the disinfectant antiseptics and disinfectant you know that these two are different uh, things so one is employed for the uh, living tissues that is nothing but the antiseptics and uh, one is employed for the dis non living tissues that is the inanimate surface you can say okay for the cleansing purposes so they are also uh, are nothing but our emulsions only they are also emulsions so suitable liquids or uh, so you can have detol or you can have the lysol for this one so they are also what emulsions they are mixer of two any two that may be oil in water or water in oil type like that okay so then uh, you can have one more application of uh, this uh, what uh, emulsions that is uh, emulsification of fat emulsification of fat so in case of living organisms i say as i said as the fats are uh, water insoluble they should be first emul uh, emulsified they will form into a micelle like structure they will form the micelle like structure with the help of your bile juice pigments or bile salts they help in the digestion of fat right they act as a emulsifiers natural emulsifiers they are which are present inside okay so that is the concept as well as you can have the cleansing action of soap cleansing of soap you already learned this one in detail so okay cleansing action of what you can say uh, the soap so there i discussed about the soap if it is interact with the oil or the grease so it will connect by means of its hydrophobic end and so that the hydrophilic end will be away from the globule that is nothing but the grease or the that what you call for this one this is called as the micelle structure so that is also an example for what our emulsion so where we can see that oil in water type of emulsion you can have okay so that helps in the cleansing action of soap also so these are the some of the what you can say applications of what our emulsion so finally Uh, let us move on to the last concept of the chapter that is nothing but the applications of colloids or what we can say the colloids around us uh, what are the fields where we can apply these uh, colloids so, so there are so many fields uh, some of them i already told while explaining some of the terms okay so let us see uh, what are those you may get uh, this question so mention any two applications or any one applications they can uh, give you and uh, tell you to explain how it is then you should know okay so the first one i want to take about the uh, so emulsification already over right so we are uh, doing what applications of colloids applications of colloids applications of colloids okay now so what is this applications of colloid let us see the first one in the field of medicine so there is a wide application of these colloids in the field of medicine so the most of the medicines are colloidal in nature okay so what we can say here most of the medicines what we are going to use most of the medicines are colloidal in nature so so you can have the syrups okay best example uh, you can have the syrups that uh, you what you are going to use during the coughing or sneezing so they will be colloidal in nature right so and uh, you can have uh, some of the example for this one argyrol there is one drug so what is that argyrol that can be used as a drug uh, or that is nothing but a eye lotion i can say this is a eye lotion so if you are having some disorders uh, like redness of eye or some irritations in case of eye snow then we are going to apply some uh, what you can say uh, one lotion what is that lotion that lotion is nothing but the argyrol okay so that is also a what colloid or else you can have the example of colloidal antimony colloidal antimony okay colloidal antimony okay so that is nothing but antimony by taking this antimony you can make a colloidal solution so what is the use of this one 
you can use in the treatment of a disease called as Kala Azar. Okay, Leishmania, that is also called as Leishmania disease. Right, so that is a fever and a skin infection, finally death of the person also that is spread through the insects from one animal to another animal, right. So that Kala Azar can be treated with the help of a uh, colloidal solution that is called as what? Colloidal antimony. Likewise, uh, you can have one more example also, milk of magnesia, milk of magnesia, right. So that can be used as what? antacid that can be used as an antacid to cure the what uh, the stomach disorders so if gastritis happens no because of the consumption of uh, some acidic uh, food or like that uh, the the junk foods and all you are come across the acidosis uh, acidosis in such cases uh, there will be burning sensation in the stomach and all so then uh, milk of magnesia can be given for that person so that acts as what antacid that is also uh, one of the colloidal solution so this is these are all the uses of uh, colloids in the field of medicine any one if you write that is more than enough right so likewise uh, you can have one more application of these uh, colloids that is nothing but in case of uh, electrical pre precipitation so where in case of electrical precipitation, electrical precipitation which is very very important here, precipitation, right. So what is this uh, electrical precipitation? So you know that uh, nowadays uh, we are uh, surrounded by means of so many pollutants. Those pollutants uh, may be main, most of the pollutants uh, are from the industries. Most of the pollutants are from the industries, okay. So, uh, if, they are, if they, they release so many times of exhaust gases into the atmosphere, right. So, those gases consist of what? Uh, the poisonous gases like sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide, nitrogen dioxide like that. So, okay. So, if they mix with the air means what they will cause? They will cause so many respiratory disorders. So many respiratory disorders. So before letting them, so the government has been uh, uh, order atwa, uh, bring a rule that before letting the uh, gases, exhaust gases from the industry, they should be treated so that we can minimize the pollution. So that can be done by help using the electrical precipitate, precipitator. So simply I will write a simple diagram for that one. So the structure will be like that, like this for the electrical precipitator which is having an electrode, having electrode and uh, here you are letting the what uh, the exhaust gases, exhaust gases that consists of uh, poisonous gases and uh, here somewhere uh, you are going to see that there will be outlet so which uh, consists of uh, free gases okay uh, gases free free gases or you can say the gases which are uh, minimized uh, pollutants which are having the minimized pollutants in them right so here you can see that uh, the impurities uh, the poisonous substances they will get precipitated and settle at the bottom right so this is called as control precipitator or you can also called as electrical precipitator so here is nothing but the electrode electrode okay nearly that is uh, nearly 30,000 volts of electrodes uh, uh, we are going to uh, provide this one uh, potential difference or you can say current of 30,000 volt is allowed through this electrode so simply it is what it is nothing but your electrophoresis only electrophoresis only where we can see that because uh, the gases they are nothing but uh, what we can say so they are nothing but uh, solid in gas aerosol they are aerosols so these are the gases which are released from the industries right so when they are let into this control precipitator or electrical precipitator what happens so then a high voltage current is passed across the electrodes so as these uh, colloidal particles or you can say the gases they consist of what the impurities they are also charged they will move to the opposite uh, what electrodes and get the set discharge and get settled down 
right so then so the gas which come out it will free from the poisonous gases like so that may be your uh, sulfur dioxide that may be uh, what we can say uh, that is carbon dioxide or that may be what uh, nitrogen dioxide so now this uh, gas which coming out from this cutral precipitator is uh, free from the poisonous gases so this is how you can minimize what the uh, the impurities letting into the environment so that's why again note uh, see here you can see that uh, collides are very useful in case of what uh, the uh, what we can say uh, this is the application of one of the application of collides okay likewise you can have one more uh, that is nothing but that is uh, in case of tanning of leather what is that if i write here tanning of leather okay so we are having one more that is called as tanning of le leather so second one i wrote down so that is uh, electrical precipitation electrical precipitation the third one is nothing but the tanning of leather okay so tanning of leather so you know that so leather so it is uh, usually it is from what animal hides so leather is nothing but the animal hide animal what we can say hides so that is uh, from the skin of the animals we are going to prepare uh, the leather uh, uh, what uh, we can say the item, uh, items so like uh, that may be your belts that may be the shoes that may be the vanity bags what you carry that may be the dress coats what you wear that may be the belt of the watches what you are having you you all uh, are very fond of leather items right so how those leather items are prepared so they are prepared from the animal hide but if you look at the animal skin that will be very smooth in nature then how it has been converted into that much hard if i observe this uh, watch also right how it has been become that much hard so that is mainly because of one process that is called as tanning of leather what actually happens there so this animal hide it is actually positively charged collides animal hide is a positively charged collide okay so when it is added to a chemical that is called as a tannin so which is negatively charged negatively charged what happens precipitation takes place or you can say mutual coagulation takes place so when you mix these two what happens mutual coagulation takes place right much mutual coagulation takes place that leads to the formation of a leather which is hard that leads to the hardening of leather hardening of leather so that process is called as what that process is called as the tanning of leather where two oppositely charged collides are mixed with each other leads to the mutual coagulation finally hardening of leather this is one more application of collides right so again you are having one more that is nothing but uh, rubber latex so rubber latex so you know that rubber latex it is obtained from the plants that is also an example for collides so what uh, you know about the use of rubber so we are going to use the rubber in various fields right you are going to use the rubbers in the various fields so there you can see that the uh, the rubber latex can be uh, obtained so by the coagulation of latex so uh, that is nothing but a collide rubber latex is a collide collide okay obtained from rubber plants collide from rubber plants from rubber plants right so that can also be and if you have, you have seen the rubber latex means that will be what sticky in nature that is nothing but the collides how that can be precipitated by adding the sulfur what do you call for that one volcanization of rubber so that is also again an example for our collide so also you can have one more example that is the photographic films one more application photographic films photographic films okay so they are lined or they they are prepared by coating emulsion of light sensitive agbr 
how these photographic films are prepared by coating by coating uh, light sensitive by coating light what sensitive silver bromide silver bromide solution by coating uh, what uh, silver bromide in gelatin this is nothing but an emulsion silver bromide in gelatin is an emulsion so that is coated to what the photographic films and which is very useful in taking the photographs or in developing the image of a uh, person okay so likewise uh, we can have uh, some other examples also we can just uh, write down here so that is uh, the products like uh, industrial products industrial products what we are going to use like uh, uh, your paints okay that may be paint or uh, ink what we are going to use the paints ink okay synthetic and plastic uh, synthetic rubber one more is uh, synthetic rubber synthetic rubber okay are you getting the concept synthetic rubber and also graphite lubricants okay graphite lubricants all these are what uh, synthetic lubricants cements cement what you are going to use right if you add the water to the cement that will become a colloid also all these uh, industrial products are also example for our what colloid and also i can join this one also finally delta delta so what is delta actually that is a region where the river meets the sea river meets the sea that region is called as the delta there also you can see that you know that sea consists of uh, dissolves uh, calcium and magnesium ions because that is hard in nature right so if you take uh, river water river water that is having water negatively charged ions negatively charged ions that leads to the formation of what delta that is also in uh, example for what are that is also an application of colloids so this is how uh, you can say all these are what uh, applications of uh, colloids uh, where we can see that uh, the colloids are very very useful in our day to day lives so we are going to use them in the medical field uh, they are also used in case of what we can say uh, that is nothing but the electrical precipitators in order to treat the industrial gases which are poisonous in nature and then they are also used in case of uh, tanning of leather because leather will be very smooth see here we have to remember again animal hide is positively charged and the tannin what you are going to add for that one uh, that will be what uh, that will be uh, negatively charged so their mutual coagulation takes place that is likewise uh, you can have the rubber latex or else the photographic films that is lined by agbr in gelatin emulsion as well as these are the industrial products and also i told about the what delta and also you can quote uh, this one also the dust or uh, the formation of a dust smoke right also the foams or the fogs in the morning all on they are also example for what our collides so that's why collides are very very useful so at the end i can say that in case of surface chemistry we learned about or learned in detail about what uh, we can say the adsorption that is a first concept right so there uh, you have to remember the thermodynamic concepts uh, that is during adsorption uh, that is a change in the internal energy that is delta g as well as enthalpy as well as entropy all are negative that is a very important concept and uh, theory of that adsorption how adsorption actually takes place right and uh, characteristics next we learn about the catalysis the, so there in the catalysis you have to learn about heterogeneous and homogeneous catalysis and the example for both and uh, how this uh, heterogeneous catalysis uh, is very useful in case of industries right so again we learn about the enzymes they are nothing but the bio, bio catalysts and their characteristics and they are also their mechanism and then we uh, that is all about the catalysis and their application finally we come to the 
collides that is also one more very very important so if you go for theoretical concepts you have to learn the differences between lyophobic and lyophilic salts and then one more is differences between physisorption and chemisorption right so again uh, you have to learn about the characteristics of a catalysis right uh, and the classification of collides and all okay so in the next class we are going to discuss some of the questions related to this uh, surface chemistry chapter okay thank you